what you see is what you get. I uh, expect these to be long, very drawn out videos. So don't, you know, it's not going to be like a quick one, two, three paint job. Uh, this is for the people that really just want to sit there and watch the experience uh, step by step in real time. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, this will be a series of videos. Today is part one. Uh, first day of starting the project uh, So for anyone that hasn't seen the first video or if you do want to check out the first video of the, the first one I worked on um, You know this this statue overall Wasn't well perceived by you know the collector community Mainly the paint colors, um, you know, it's, it's Sideshow Collectibles. It's sculpted by Martin Canale. So the sculpt is fantastic, but the paint was a little bit dull. Um, again, seeing it in person, the blue areas look pretty nice. Uh, where I have an issue with this piece is going to be mainly his skin, you know, the rocky gray texture. Uh, looks like it was very quickly painted. You know, not much detail um, within the cracks, not much shading, not much highlights. So basically, we're going to be doing the same thing that I did on the very first one that I painted. Uh, we're going to be brightening up the blue areas, doing better shading, doing better highlights. Uh, we're going to be brightening up the gray areas, same thing. And I will probably be going into the base on this one. Um, the collector that I'm working on this for was very patient with me getting to this. So I'm going to put in a few little extra, um, you know, put in a little extra time on this one for him for being so patient. So it'll get all the bells and whistles and should look great. Yeah, if you want to check out the first video, if you're looking for a quick video, you know, I think it's like a 20 minute, less than 20 minutes of me painting this. Go check it out. It's on my channel from a few months back. Um, there's also photos of him already painted on Instagram as well as my Facebook. It's all things art. And yeah, so uh, I'm going to quickly uh, prep him. Uh, expect this video probably to be a few hours as long as it goes okay. Uh, this is my first time streaming on the channel, so I'm doing it from my mobile device. So hopefully nothing crashes. But uh, what I expect to get done today is... I should be able to, I'm basically going to block in all of the base colors, so I should be able to get through all of the gray skin colors. I'm probably not going to do the portraits today, but I should be able to block in all the, the new gray colors. I should be able to block in all the new blue colors. And then I believe on the last one, I was able to also the same day go in and start doing the ink washing on the suit as well as the boots. Uh, the hand believe I saved that for last this magnet's pretty strong so basically we're just gonna work I'm gonna focus on the body today let's look at the portrait this was the other complaint with this hand let's see if I can zoom in on this so he had that orange glow on the hand we'll be getting rid of that uh, I also made a custom mother box that uh, lights up and flashes and glows. It's really cool. So I'll be doing that for this project as well. So this will get completely repainted. We'll get rid of that orange hand. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Yeah, I got to get him quickly prepped and then we'll start painting. So let's see if I can zoom out here. Let me... Extent. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, I can get my camera to stay still. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is get the base prepped. Let me get these parts out of the way. Get him off the base. Okay. Put him off to the side for a second and we're gonna wrap up this base with some plastic so it doesn't get any overspray the 
the base will actually be the probably the very very last thing that I work on so should be able to knock out most of the body today I'm just going to get it from the other side as well. So yeah, I'm not expecting this to be like a big interactive live stream. Uh, it's mainly just for me to paint and if you want to follow along, uh, I do have my monitor up and running off to the side, so I will peek over at it from time to time. If anybody is watching this live, uh, I'll try to answer if you have any questions about, you know, painting or tools that I'm using or so forth. Uh, for the most part, I'll be running through what I'm doing as I go, but for the most part, I'm going to be just focused on painting. Um, so, enjoy. Uh, so, yeah. We got him. Let's find a few holes. Hold there. Get him back on the base. So this guy's quite interesting to paint because, as you can see, he's just one giant chunk of statue. Not like, uh, you yeah, know, I can remove a lot of pieces here. It's always tricky finding the keyhole when it's wrapped in plastic. All right, so we got the base wrapped off. I should be able to get to most of it. I'll do the back of the boots last since it's kind of covered with the base. But uh, yeah, other than that, the only other thing you could possibly do is create some type of a, you know, mock-up stand for him to stand on if you don't want to paint him on top of the base. This way everything's out of the way, but I'll just do the back. Same thing I did on the first one. I'll do the back of the boots last. And uh, yeah, that's all that comes off for this statue. Everything else is attached. The legs are attached. The back arm is attached. Which made it difficult. I wish this was removable. It would make things a lot easier. Alright, so for this project. Um, like I said, I'm going to be blocking off the grays and the blues. Same thing I did around the first time. Using, hey, let me zoom in. So whenever I can get away with just using paint straight out of the bottle without mixing it, I like to do that. So this is a uh, sky gray by Vallejo. That was for the gray skin, just for the the base coat. And then this one was magic blue by Vallejo. Uh, this was the base coat for the blue areas, and then I go in with you know darker and lighter colors for the shadows, as well as some as some ink washes. Um, you know, if I don't have to mix my paints up and worry about exactly mixing them and so forth, it's a lot easier. That's so why I don't have to worry about the exact mix ratios and trying to memorize them and all that good stuff. Right. Just check on my monitor, see what we got here. See, so we got casual nerd, tough casual. And Ronaldo. Hey, what's up, Ronaldo? Uh, yeah, man, I sent you a message last night. I don't know if you saw it. I'm going to send you an email later on tonight. Um, I got your project all finished up. It looks good. All right, so let's start off with the gray. Got my little mixing cups here. Uh, my thinner. Again, I have videos on this. If you want to see what I use for thinner, it's basically just isopropyl alcohol, water, and some glycol. 
to slow down the uh, the mixing, well, I should say the drying times. And I'll do, okay. Might as well mix up a large batch because this guy is quite big. Takes up a lot of paint. Basically, you want to mix up your paint until it's about, say, like, you know, milk consistency, basically, to where it's dripping. So, it should be good right there. You can always adjust the, uh, the airflow on the compressor. So, I'm trying something new, being that I'm doing this as a live stream. I have my compressor in the other room, so it's not constantly kicking on and off and making a ton of noise. But on the other hand, I can't monitor the pressure as I usually do when it's sitting right next to me. So we'll see how that works out. I'm using a longer hose as well. So hopefully that doesn't affect my airflow. <laughs> it's the first time I'm testing this. So the camera. I need a piece of test paper or something for my colors. Let's see. All right, let's start off with the arms. Let me get you guys zoomed in. See what the hell I'm doing. Get painting. Yeah, so basically I'm just going over all the gray, brightening it up. Later on we'll go back. And the highlights. Add the shadows. This is kind of like all the boring stuff, just getting the colors in. I like shading and highlighting. That's where all the fun is at. Uh, uh, so now usually like projects I would mask them off between the two colors uh, because I'm just blocking in the colors. And hopefully my hand control is pretty good. I don't usually like doing this stuff live. Um, yeah, I'm not masking it off. At the end, I'll go in and clean up any overspray that I have.
Sorry. Sorry for the noise, but I gotta kick in my uh, fan here a little bit. It's getting misty. Yeah, so as I put on the color, it's going to look crazy as, at first until I go back in and do all the shading and highlighting and uh, the weathering. Just checking on you guys, all right. Hey, what's up, Knight? Uh, I am Vengeance. Have I ever considered working for a statue company? Uh, that's my goal right now. Um, you know, I, I have an art degree. I grew up with, uh, you know, in the field of art, and I kind of like, you know, switched ways as I got older. You know, just to focus on my family. Uh, but now that you know, my kids getting older, and we're a little bit, you know, well better off. Financial wise, I am looking to back, get back into the field of art, and uh, yeah, I'm just doing commission work right now for, uh, you know, like mainly custom groups. But yeah, my goal would be to possibly work for a licensed company, maybe one day. I do have some uh, exciting news for 2024 that I can't share yet, so hopefully that'll come true. Guys, muscles are so big. It's he's got all these huge crevices everywhere. It's hard to get into. You gotta stand up for him. It's a lot easier to paint when the parts are smaller. You can rotate them. Can't really rotate this guy. I just gotta rotate myself. <laughs> he's fun to paint, though. I like painting like grays and blues and it's got a lot of cool crevices and you know muscle definition it's fun shading and highlighting this guy
That's why a lot of times when I do my videos, uh, I don't show everything because it's sometimes it's kind of hard to you know get into certain areas and capture it on film. Like if I'm trying to you know hover my hand in a certain area, you're not going to see it. So that's why I usually edit half of the stuff out. And you can't show everything. I mean, if I had like a camera guy following me around, but to sit there and constantly adjust the camera as I'm painting, it's just it's too time consuming and a pain in the ass. And yeah, basically impractical. So I try to record what I can when I do record these types of videos. But obviously with this live stream it's uh it's a little tricky because I have my camera all the way out in the back and I can't even see what it's capturing. I'm peeking at it every so often just to make sure it's somewhat in frame. Right, let's see. I gotta get under his arm here. Alright, slowly getting there on this arm. It's almost done. As far as the base colors go. Big difference though if you look at the two arms. It's obviously not going to be that bright when it's finished. It's going to darken up quite a bit with the ink wash. Uh, if you haven't watched that, check out my ink wash video <laughs> where I explain the whole ink wash process. It's basically literally taking ink and uh, washing it over, letting the ink fall into the crevices, which this guy has a ton of with uh, the rock texture, and then you can wipe it off. The top surface so that the ink just remains in the uh, the cracks it creates a really cool effect and it's quite effective and it's very easy to do and very quick to do and I'm surprised they haven't done that for the statue because it wouldn't have taken that much longer to do that and it would have made a huge difference on the statue and uh, I think a lot more people would have been happy with the paint overall so like I said the blue's not that bad on him We are out of paint. I gotta reload the paint cup. Right, 
Let's, let's check on the live stream who we got here. Um, Dflex1, no, I do not paint for a living. Well, I paint part-time, I guess, as a living, more as a hobby, though. Uh, I just enjoy painting. Hopefully one day, though. Hoping to get hired by a company. Again, I might have some exciting news for 2024. Got to mix up a new cup of paint here. Actually, I still have more left in my cup. Hold on. over the arm, make sure I didn't miss any spots. Get underneath one more time. Alright, that's looking pretty good for that arm as far as just the base color goes. And then later we'll come back, we'll do the ink wash. Well, actually, the ink wash for the skin will be tomorrow. I'm looking to probably do a live stream again tomorrow. Uh, so, with this guy, sorry, my dogs are barking. I think I just got an Amazon delivery. Uh, so for this guy, if you watch my ink wash video, I usually like to clear coat uh, the piece before I ink wash it. It just makes it easier for the ink to get off of uh, you know, the object. Um, but for the blue, I do want to make the blue a lot darker than this magic blue, which is very bright and vibrant. So the blue I should be able to do today if... Uh, Things go smoothly, and I'll get the ink wash done on the blue. It'll stain the blue, make the blue darker. I'll give them a nice clear coat to protect everything, and then tomorrow I'll come in and then do the ink wash on the skin. Uh, this way it doesn't stain the skin as dark, and it'll be easy to wipe off and get out of the cracks and all that stuff. Let that dry. I'll get back to that side if I have to. Okay.
Uh, D Flex, I've been learning. Well, I should say learning. I've been painting uh, my whole life. Like I said, I do have an art degree. I also do graphic design. You know, um, you know, computer design. Uh, but as far as painting, like airbrushing, um, probably my biggest mentor is uh, Matt Mar Matt Marozowik. I'm probably saying his name wrong. Sorry, Matt. Uh, yeah, Matt Marozik, I think it is pronounced. Um, he has a YouTube channel. He does a lot of same thing, live streaming. And I used to just sit there. He, you know, he does the same thing that I'm trying to do here today. He'll do like three hour videos, four hour videos, and. You know, yeah, they're, they're long videos, but if you sit there and watch every single little thing, uh, you know, you pick up on little things. You know, obviously you add your own techniques and ways of doing things along the way. But as far as like airbrushing, yeah, shout out to Matt uh, Morozik. I think I said it right that time. Uh, from Matt Matt's Model Customs, I believe is the name of his Facebook page and YouTube channel. Definitely go check him out. He's really good. Uh, but yeah, growing up, I was a lot into, I guess you could say, it's called, you know, graffiti art, street art, and doing murals, uh, which, you know, you're constantly using, you know, a spray paint can. A uh, spray paint can is not that much different than an airbrush gun. In fact, in airbrush gun is even easier to use than a spray paint can because you have with a let's see if I'm on frame with a with an airbrush gun pushing down gives you you know your airflow so no paint is coming out right now and then pulling back uh, is what makes the paint come out to where so it's, it's a two step process to where you know uh, spray paint you just push down and the paint comes flying out so you get more control with an airbrush gun. So coming from you know a spray paint background, it was a lot easier transitioning into an airbrush gun. It's a lot more fun too. Well, yeah, I picked up a 3D printer a few years ago. I was 3D printing, just practicing on stuff. Like I said, painting my whole life, so it comes a little bit natural to me, so it wasn't too big of a learning curve. But yeah, if you ever want to practice on something, 3D printers are fairly cheap these days, and they're getting better and better. So um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool just to 3D print in general, but to have something to practice on that's you know fairly inexpensive is also great as well. Uh, where did I learn the fixed statues? So, <laughs> yeah, like a couple of years ago, somehow I got labeled as uh, the repair guy, and I've been getting contacted left and right to repair statues. Um, let me just make sure I'm still on frame for you guys. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I, all right. So, <laughs> as well as having an art background, I also have. Um, a carpentry background. I used to be a carpenter, you know, building and fixing things. So I'm kind of like a little bit of a, you know, jack of all trades, I suppose. Uh, and the two just kind of go hand in hand as far as, you know, repairing stuff and building stuff. But uh, I would say the most experience, I think, yeah, I'm out of paint here. Uh, the most experience for doing repairs uh, came from putting together 3D prints. So when you're, you know, when you're 3D printing something, uh, you know, everything's coming in small parts. You're, you're prepping the parts. You know, you have to sand the parts. You have to, you know, erase any 
uh, 3D supports that might have been stuck inside of the print. So you're doing a lot of you know prep work. You're doing a lot of sanding and surface prepping. You're doing a lot of priming just before you can even begin to paint uh, the 3D printed you know statue, object, or whatever you know it is that you printed. So, and then also you're putting in magnets. Uh, you know you're making sure the pieces fit together because when they come off the printer, uh, not everything. You know fits together properly so a lot of like 3d printing and doing the prep work is very similar to doing repair work if something breaks so that's where i would say that experience came from like you know 99 percent of it was uh just getting into 3d printing and getting my uh models ready for paint all right now i definitely need to mix up a new cup of paint here Hey, what's up, Obi-Wan? Uh, repair video. So I must have done like 50 repairs this year, and I think I made like less than 10 videos for them. <laughs> I have the videos. I just never edited them. So I have a ton of repair videos coming. I just need to edit them. Um, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to do a live stream today is it saves me time. I don't have to edit anything. You know, yeah, there's going to be a lot of boring stuff to watch. But I don't have to edit it, and I can get it out right away. So, you know, if anything you want to skip through, you can skip through on the replay. But, yeah, because, you know, when you're painting, and I said it earlier in the video, when you're painting, it's, it's kind of hard to get the camera, you know, on certain areas to see what I'm doing. So there's no point in recording something if you're just staring at the back of my head or, uh, you know, if my hand's in the way. So it takes a lot of editing when doing, you know, these types of videos, whether it's repairs or just painting something. So, you know, it, it might take me like, you know, 30 hours to paint something sometimes and to sit there and have to scroll through 30 hours of video and pick out, you know, 20 minutes of the most exciting parts of that video. It's, it's time consuming. It could take me a few days just to edit videos. Um... And then also, my house is always pretty noisy. I have dogs. There's dogs barking in the background. Uh, luckily, today, they're not too bad. Um, you know, I have a wife and kids, so, you know, if they're making noise in the background, I obviously don't want that in the video. So, I have to edit all of that out. What I usually do is voiceovers, which I really don't like doing, because then it just sounds like I'm reading a book to you guys, but I uh, don't have much of a choice. <laughs> it's better than, I guess, listening to... Uh, you know, dogs barking. But, yeah, I have a ton of videos coming. I just need to edit them. I think my next one, uh, you know, I teased it a while back. It's going to be uh, duplicating parts. So, I had somebody that I did a repair for. And uh, it was for a ninja. It was a prime one piece, some anime ninja piece. And the character had, uh, you know, two swords. Uh, the guy had broken the handle on one of the katana blades. And, sorry, I'm just trying to focus on painting and talk at the same time. And he was missing the bottom handle of the katana. So being that the other hand also had, you know, the same katana blade, I was able to make a silicone mold of it and uh duplicate it so that was a really cool process so that will most likely be the next repair video uh of doing sil silicone silicone molds and resin casting so i basically made a new part out of an existing part to repair the statue it's really cool so that's that's going to be a really cool fun video As I get going here, I'll get quicker <laughs> once I get into the groove of painting.
this guy. So yeah, I think this guy stands like 25 inches tall. So luckily I built this larger spray booth because pieces like this, it's hard to paint in a smaller spray booth. Like, like right now I have to stand up just to paint this guy. I think the beginning of next year, I'm actually going to redo this booth and uh, do something a little bit nicer. So I'll give you guys a different angle. See what's going on here. Right. I think this arm is mostly done. Just gonna go back over it one more time. Again. I don't know if my head's on video, but if you're wondering why I'm wearing a hood, I'm, I have headphones on, I'm listening to music. Uh, normally I have music playing in the background, you know, out loud, but I don't want to get copyrighted for, you know, music rights that I don't own, so I have headphones on where I'm listening to music and my hood's just adding some cushion so the headphones don't hurt my ear. Yeah, so... A lot of this is the boring stuff. Uh, I will get to the blue today, and I should be able to start ink washing and shading and highlighting the blue. So the blue will be fun. And then tomorrow, I'll come back and I'll do the, the skin tones and weather them and do the shading on the skin and all that. And then the third video will most likely be the portraits and the hand. See how much I get done each day. Like I said, these, these arms are tricky because, you know, they don't come off. So the thing is now, I forgot to mention, and it's actually really important. So like when these, when they paint these in the factory, the parts do come off. So if they were painting this in the factory, the arm is already off and the glove is already off. And then they paint it and then they glue them together and stick them together. So it makes, you know, guys that painted this in the factory, it was a lot easier for them. It's where, you know, doing a repaint, I, I can't remove the arm and rotate it, you know, and get in all these little crevices. So to have to sit here and do a repaint is actually harder than what they did in the factory. But it is what it is. If you want it repainted, this is what you got to do. Be nice if I could pop these pieces off, paint them, and then just glue them back together. So we got the, uh, the ink wash. will hide up. Will hide a lot of what I'm doing anyway. I 
Later today, when he's all dry, I'll take him off the base and just double check everything, make sure I didn't miss any spots. If I did miss any spots, I, uh, I'll go in with a regular brush, paintbrush, just touch it up. I'll be doing that at the end anyway. Yeah, Ronaldo, yeah, man, just seeing your comment now. Yeah, 3D printing is awesome. It's a lot of fun. Um, so there's two types of 3D uh, printing. There's uh, FDM printers, and then there's resin print uh, resin printers. Uh, the resin printers, you know, get you better details, but dealing with resin, it's pretty nasty uh, chemical. So when, you, when you're, you know, printing with resin, doing 3D printing with resin, you know, you have gloves on you have respirators on you know you don't want to do that stuff indoors i have a separate uh you know room for all that with the proper ventilation so that stuff is really toxic uh you know getting it on your skin is no joke i've seen guys in the community get some really bad nasty rashes or you know cuts from the the resin it just burns their skin not everybody i mean everybody's different but most people have those FDM style printers. Those you can put in the house. They just run on a, it's not liquid. It runs on a, a roll, of, like a filament roll. And then the, the printer heats it up as it's printing. It melts it. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. I think I got most of that on. one of the reasons why I haven't used my 3D printer in so long. Uh, I mean, it's fun, but man, it's, it's nasty stuff. The smell, the cleanup. It's like working in a, a biohazard lift. down to his legs and get to the blue the blue is obviously a lot a lot easier to paint the blue except for behind his hand because it's hard to get back here I'll have to do all that with the brush a hand you know paintbrush uh, but yeah with the arms you know trying to get under his arm you know, everything a little tricky under his little skirt area here it's just flat they even sculpted it. it's just it's a flat surface here let me actually pan down we're going to start painting his legs next. Edwin. Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Looking forward to the Christmas holiday if you celebrate Christmas. I got my uncle down from Florida. I'm gonna later today go visit him. Not in Florida. He, he uh, flew out here for the week. Alright, so let's get the, uh, the lights painted.
Yeah, so if you're just tuning in, this is going to be a series of videos, hopefully. <laughs> I guess this one's still going, so my phone hasn't died yet. Uh, so yeah, it should be uh, live streaming again tomorrow. I think it'll probably take three, maybe four videos, we'll see. The last video, I don't know if it'll be a video, because it's going to be a lot of detail work and be hovering over what I'm painting, so... It'll just be a video of the back of my head, which is no fun. But I'll see what I can do. I'll try to capture as much as I can on camera. Yeah, and I have a. I already painted one of these. There's a shorter video out for him on my channel. Sorry, it's hard to. <laughs> guys are probably tripping out. It's hard to <laughs> zoom when you're live. I don't have a the zoom control on my phone anymore. All right, uh, I need more paint. It's funny as I'm painting his legs, I'm noticing a little, not like a defect, but they left like a brush, a brush hair on the paint. <laughs> nice quality control by the factory. A little bristle stuck to his body. I'll have to fix that from Big difference in the color. Again, this gray will not be this bright in the end. I'm going to be doing an ink wash. Uh, so like I said, when you do ink washes, it stains the paint and darkens it quite a bit. So anytime you're doing ink washes, you want to start with a brighter color, a few shades brighter than what you expect it to be in the end. Okay. 
paint spill on my table there. When I get to these areas where I gotta like tilt my airbrush back, I don't like keeping the cap on top. So I like to kind of see what's going on with my paint, make sure there's no uh, air bubbles going on or anything clogged. So uh, I usually don't paint with the top on. Like, you know, the airbrush comes with the top that you can stick on top so the paint doesn't spill out. Um, so when I get to these areas where I, I know I have to tilt the gun back, I try to do it at the end where there's barely any paint in the cup. This way it doesn't go spilling everywhere. I always save those towards the end. Put it on the, I probably just jinxed myself, so now I am putting it on. <laughs> I gotta go under his skirt here. A few tricky areas, tricky areas uh, on this shin guard. It's one of them. I remember when I painted the first one. That was an area that took me quite a while, back and forth, back and forth between the gray and the blue. So I can get everything looking clean because it's just one of those areas, even with a brush, it's, it's just hard to get into it. Probably mask it off and then spray down there. So I'm not too worried about that for now. I'll go back in there later. Do like a lot of weathering on his knees anyway. Make it look like his, his skin is ashy. I think, I'll, yeah, on the first one, I just did all, you know, different shades of gray. Uh, maybe I did brown, but on this one, I definitely want to make it look like his skin's a little bit ashy looking in certain spots. So I'll be going in with, like, a light brown. 
you know, just like in the, you know, these areas. It looks like they they did it on here. It's just it's hard to see. You know, like, like on the elbows, usually like where the skin would get like ashy in certain areas. I think that might look pretty cool. Have like all the gray tones and then just a few areas. Very very subtle. Just like a little bit of like hints of brown. I notice they do that on a lot of you know, a lot of companies will do that on their dark side statues. <laughs> What's up, Billy? Devastator. Uh, let's see. Description. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I could add that to uh, to the description. Uh, I was actually thinking of doing a video just showing like my my desk here, or I should say like my booth slash desk. I have like a few things going on here uh, of supplies. Just going through like every supply that I use. Um, as far as like airbrush guns, compressors. You know, thinning your paint, everything that you need to, like, get started as far as, like, you know, the tools for airbrushing itself. Uh, I actually did a video on that already. I think it's called Everything You Need to Know uh, to Begin Airbrushing or Everything You Need to Know About Airbrushing or something like that. Uh, that's from, like, a few months back. If you check my channel, I go over what uh, airbrush gun I use or prefer. Uh, this is an uh, Iwata Eclipse HP. It's considered like a workhorse because it's good at you know spraying large areas like I'm doing now and it's also good at doing very fine details so it's a uh, overall uh, a really you know nice airbrush gun for the price uh, it's like hundred and fifty dollars so it's not too bad I mean there's you know there's airbrush guns out there that go for six seven hundred dollars but for painting statues uh, you know, this is great. Uh, I like uh, Iwata. So Iwata also makes a gun called uh, the Neo, which is even cheaper. I think it's like an $80 airbrush gun. Really awesome as well. That one has like a smaller paint cup though. So even though I don't usually fill the cup up that high anyway, so I like to kind of rinse my airbrush gun every so often, just keep it running smoothly. Uh, probably be the only downfall to that gun. Otherwise, the specs are pretty much the same on it. As far as like the needle size goes everything goes by the needle size so the larger the needle the, the bigger the spray pattern uh, the smaller the needle you can get you know very thin lines this one pretty much you know it's, it's a well balanced airbrush gun uh, for compressors cheapest one you can find basically the biggest and cheapest when it comes to compressors there is no you know one brand is better than the other when it comes to a compressor Whatever you have the space for. I always recommend, you know, the larger the compressor, the better. Because uh, if you have a smaller tank, it's constantly kicking on and off. The motor kicks on and off, on and off, and it's quite annoying. Um, I actually just moved it to my other room. I'm running a 20-foot air hose here right now. And I actually, I don't hear it, which is really nice, because it even annoys me at times. I didn't want it to be uh, kicking on and off every two seconds on the video but yeah if you get a, a large compressor tank uh, you know you, you get more air overall before the motor kicks back on so just makes the experience a little bit better so you're not constantly listening to a motor running all right that leg looks pretty decent I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and settle because you know as paint dries it gets a little bit darker so you know some of the areas are looking wet right now so I'm just gonna let that dry I'm gonna move over to the other leg and his skin as far as the body goes is almost done and I can start getting into all the blue areas the blue areas are a lot more fun to paint all right one more leg let me take off too so I don't like these lids I can't see what's going on we're almost out of paint let me see what's going on with my phone. Zoom in a little bit. Not too far. That's 
つくことだよね。As a look at it, the other thing they did was they put this like weathering effect.、Uh, I mean, I get, I know what they were going for. You know, it's like, it's like it splashed mud on the, the bottom of his loincloth, but it's, they made it the same color as his skin, so it just looks like the factory, you know, did a sloppy paint job and just. Acts like you know, forgot the mask off the you know, the legs from the body, and it just looks like the light color was sprayed up onto the body. So, definitely getting rid of that. We won't be doing that. There was just a lot of poor paint choices made from the factory. I believe this was painted by Ed Bradley at Sideshow, which he's you know, he's a great painter. So, I don't know if I mean, I can't imagine if he would. Make choices like that, so maybe something got lost in translation at the factory when they were choosing colors or something. Again, these colors are going to look crazy until I、uh, go in with the shading and the, the ink washing and all that highlight. Just tuning in. I'm basically just laying down the base coat, meaning the you know the basic color I want everything to be underneath everything else.、And、then I'll go in and do the, the, the shading and the crevices and the highlights on the muscles and stuff, and then the ink wash in the cracks. All right, now we need more paint. Just give us another shade. I don't need that much more. Got one leg left. I'll do the, like I said earlier, I'll do the, the heads. The heads are one of the last things I do, the portraits. That'll be a separate video if I decide to do it on video. It's kind of. I guess I could paint them as far as like maybe doing like the details on the portraits. I don't know. I'll see. It's kind of hard, like I said, to capture certain camera angles. If I feel like I can do it on video, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> Billy's comment we went to、uh, Top Golf, the dri、uh, golf driving range. Yeah, I'm not too good at、uh, hitting a golf ball. <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly flush out the airbrush gun. I like to do that every so often to keep the gun running smoothly. The other thing with the, the compressors,、uh, another reason I recommend getting a larger compressor is you know, they can overheat. If you look at a lot of these smaller compressors, Say, for example, if you go on Amazon, they'll tell you don't, don't paint more than like 20 minutes and then let the thing cool off and then paint again. Like, you don't want to sit there and paint for 20 minutes and have to stop what you're doing and wait for your compressor to cool off. So,、uh, the larger compressors have you know, better cooling methods to keep them cooler running. It's funny, a lot of my, my regular tools, like as far as like supplies go, they all come from the dollar store. So I'll, I'll quickly give you a rundown. Maybe we'll see. All right, so for like mixing cups, these are,、uh, where am I on frame? These are just shot glasses, dollar store, great for mixing.、Uh, 
um, you know, I have my sculpting tools, uh, mixing, I just use regular paintbrushes, you know, sanding, you know, if you got to sand stuff, sandpaper, got my epoxy glues, okay, you know what, I could use a quick break anyway, I'll give you a quick view of my drawers, <laughs> if I can zoom down, you know what, let's go, uh, let's go remote with my phone. So, this is what's going on so far. We're just laying down the base tones, base colors, blocking everything in before adding the, sh the shading and the highlights. Move my paint again. Base was wrapped off, so I don't get any paint on it. Uh, yeah, I'll quickly show you my uh, my drawers here. All right. uh, so I got all my Vallejo paints. Uh, let's see. I have a lot of paint in other drawers too, just not organized. So my parts laying on the foam. Uh, a few of the colors that I was using for dark side, I put them off to the side so I wouldn't forget them. Um, those are the LED lights I was using for the mother box for him. What do we got in here? Uh, epoxy sculpt. I use this for repairs a lot. It's a two part epoxy sculpt. Dries in about four hours. Got my mixing cups. Again, look. It was a line. Dollar store. Uh, silly putty. Got tons of that. I use that for masking off parts sometimes. Probably be using this on dark side as well. Uh, we got we got some gloss varnishes. Some matte varnish. This is where I keep all my chrome paint. I should say metallic paint. So I've got coppers, different metallics, gunmetal, aluminum. Uh, this is for the epoxy sculpt. It's a solution makes the, the sculpt go on smoother. Uh, some skewers. I use these as mixing sticks for my glue, as well as sometimes for my paint. Uh, some spare brushes. If I don't want to use plastic cups, I'll sometimes use the metal dishes. Backup airbrush gun, some needles. This is for an upcoming video that I film where I inject resin into a statue to make it more solid. That was a fun video. I'll show that hopefully by the end of this year. Uh, some more foam padding, filters, uh, some alcohol prep pads, some gauze pads. And top drawer, super good here. That's where I keep like all my sanding stuff and my tape. So it's like a junk drawer. <laughs> all my sanding sticks when I'm doing like repairs, some Dremel stuff, tape, all different metal rods if I'm doing like supports for repairs. And then I got another bin over there where I got like all my uh, aerosol sprays. Those are from the silicone video that I did, some clamps. So I got stuff spaced out everywhere, but for the most part, it's the stuff I use most of the time. Hopefully my phone doesn't overheat because it's getting hot. Put on a fan. Billy, I think you had the longest drive of the night, but I had the, the fastest, the most speed on my ball. So that, that counts for something. Let's finish up this line.
If my uh, phone does crash for some reason, I'll have to fire up the webcam. So, I might have to restart, or not restart, continue the video. Uh, if it does crash, it will take me about five minutes to set everything back up again. Hopefully. It says, my first time doing the live stream on my channel. So, as much as I know, phones aren't that reliable because I'm on a Wi-Fi connection. It's just, it's a lot easier for me to mount the phone up here than it is a webcam. So, that's why I chose to use a, a phone. If it's going to overheat or the Wi-Fi crashes, I'll have to go to a hardwired webcam. Let me just get in the little nooks and crannies and then we can get on over to the blue. Again, if you're ever working on a project, this you definitely want to make sure you're, you're masking areas off. You don't want overspray. I'm not doing it because in the end, it, it's going to get weathered. Um, most of the lines are pretty clean around the boots, and I'll, I'll go in by hand at the end. It might take me a little bit longer, but i got to do it anyway. So that's why I'm not like masking off the boots with tape. But normally, you know, projects like this, or I should say other, you know, other projects like this, I would uh, mask everything off and then paint the colors separate so I'm not uh, over spraying Keep that a little bit darker up there anyway, because it's one of those areas you can't get to. Um, except in the factory, this was all assembled. This this piece most likely came off at the factory, and they painted it and then glued it on. Try to get to everything.
spend a lot of time on this leg. It's hard to get, you know, in between his legs. That's what she said. One more spot. If I have to, I'll, I mean, I, I didn't have to do it on the last one, really, but if I have to, I'll, I'll tilt him on his side. Get any spots that I see that I missed. I'm just trying to be thorough because, you know, as the light hits certain areas, you may not notice it at first. Perfect timing because I just ran out of paint in my paint cup. All right, so I think. All right, gonna let that dry for a minute, and I think we're gonna start the blue. I gotta flush out my paint cup, so I'm switching colors. And as far as the base coat goes for the gray, I think that looks pretty good. So we can move to the blue. Devastator said, been, been seeing a slowdown on the shipping trade. I figure statue collecting is slowing down too. Uh, people seem to be pulling back on spending. Yeah, uh, Devastator, definitely. Uh, especially with the shipping. Yeah. It's like, you know, people don't mind spending thousands of dollars on a statue, but when you got to spend thousands of dollars on shipping, it's like, well, wh why do I want to spend that much on shipping? I can get another statue. It kind of goes back to the way that people display their statues. Which used to make me laugh. They would spend thousands of dollars on a, a statue, but then not want to spend thousands of dollars on like a display unit and buy like cheap IKEA furniture, like myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ship, shipping's a different story. I mean, you, you shouldn't have to pay that much for shipping. Uh, let me just open my window because it's getting hot in here. Especially during the holidays, seems uh, things are always slow every year. Even before, like you know, pre-COVID and uh, you know the higher shipping charges during the holidays, people just I guess aren't spending as much money, you know, on collectibles. So things usually seem to slow down during the holiday season. in the way. I'm trying to clean my brush here. Great. 
I have a million brushes, but this is my favorite. Uh, where am I? <laughs> this is my favorite brush for like stirring paint. So when I switch colors, I gotta clean it up. Paint cup. We're gonna again for the blue base tone. I'm using uh, Vallejo's Magic, Magic, Magic Blue. It's very bright. It's gonna go on very bright. Where am I? Sorry. It's gonna go on very bright, but uh, once I do the ink wash, it's gonna dull it down quite a bit. Good shake. I already shook the paint uh, this morning before I started the video, so, but when you're painting, make sure you shake your paints up really good. Mixing coat. still got you here thanks for everybody that's watching <laughs> i know that this video isn't for everybody these are these videos are going to be really boring you know no no fancy editing no fancy transition effects if you want to see that check out my other dark side video it's less than 20 minutes it shows the whole statue getting painted in, in 20 minutes this is for the people that you know are curious or maybe want to get into painting statues or airbrushing if you really want to see what goes into it and how long it takes this is what goes into it look we're at a uh, hour and a half and all I did was put down the base tone for the gray which is pretty much nothing so it's very time consuming it's gonna take me a few hours just to do the base tone between the blue and the gray and that's just basically one day's work. Um, altogether, this project will probably be like 20 hours. Hopefully less. But again, like I said, uh, shout out to Matt Morozik. Mar I'm going to butcher his name every time. Matt Morozik. Um, he's a channel I watch. He does the same thing. He does like four-hour videos. And, you know, my spare time... Uh, you know off to the side I would just sit there and either listen to them or, or watch them pick up little tips and tricks and it's kind of how I learned along the way as far as getting started with airbrushing so uh, yeah shout out to Matt's model customs or Matt, Matt's custom models sorry man I keep butchering your name and your company name <laughs> I'll say it right eventually Matt Matt Morozik so when I uh, clean out my airbrush gun, basically just grab a wipe, a wet wipe, clean out the inside real quick, so I don't have a ton of backwash when I uh, dump my cleaner in there. For my cleaner, I just use my thinner. My thinner is uh, isopropyl alcohol mixed with water for the most part. I mean, if the gun's not too dirty, sometimes I'll just use distilled water. Never want to use regular water because it does contain hard minerals that could get into the, the paint when you're spraying it. So always want to use distilled water. All right, so the inside of the cup is clean, but now I got to flush out the needle. So for that, Handy dandy airbrush cleaning little station here. And uh, it's also made by a water, but they sell all different brands you can get on Amazon or in hobby stores. So basically your airbrush gun just sits in here. Take your thinner, whatever you're using to clean. And uh, basically you're just spraying it into the, the little container here. I mean, you could probably make one of these, but they're not that, they're like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. And you just flush it out.
What's up, Billy? Hey, man. Glad you're here. <laughs> Not bothering me at all. I could use the laugh. Basically flushing that out until it's clear, so we're looking good. Now, back to the phone. <laughs> Painting statues. All right, so we're gonna get into the blue, which will be a nice change of pace. Um, originally, I was gonna mask off the gray because when I painted this the first time. You know, the other one I did, I did get a lot of blue overspray, and I did spend a lot of time going back and fixing the base tone for the gray. Um, but in order to mask off an area, it's, you know, you should technically clear coat it first. This way, you're not pulling, pulling the, uh, the paint off uh, with the tape, or at least let it dry, you know, till the next day. Uh, being I want to continue working today and not stop right here, I might just try to block it, like even with my hand or a, like a little plastic shield or something. I mean, if I get a little overspray, I don't care. I'm going to touch it up with the paintbrush, but I don't want to happen what happened the first time. Where I had a lot of, I mean, it wasn't too noticeable, but I had a lot of blue overspray and it was just a pain in the ass to clean up. So... Trying this for the first time, see how it goes. Worst case, I'll just get the majority of the blue on and just stay away from, you know, the areas where it goes into the gray. This way, there's no overspray. Mixing paint for airbrushing. Put my on camera. Right, so. You got your paint, you got your thinner. I did a video on it. Everything you need to know about airbrushing. Basically, diluting your paint. It's about the consistency of milk. So it looks like it's drippy. So right there, we just get really nice, slow drips. It's kind of like where you want it. If it's dripping too quickly, it's too watery. If it's not dripping at all, it's too thick. Uh, again, that all can be adjusted with the compressor and the pressure settings on the compressor. So your mileage may vary, but for the most part, you want it somewhat milky. blue. Alright, where should we start? Uh, start on the chest. So let's get him up. That looks good. All right. Again, this is going to look really crazy until I get the shading and the and the uh, the ink wash on. It's going to look really bright.
They left a lot of yeah, whoever painted this did it. Very sloppy. See like little defects stuck in the paint. So one thing I noticed about uh, this live stream, I was doing some test streaming the other night just to see how everything looked. Uh, I did notice that on my phone, the colors look a lot more saturated than it does in person. So like right now, it's looking like a really like vibrant blue. In person, it's it's not that crazy looking. I mean, it's gonna look crazy looking either way, but it's a lot more saturated on the video. If you want to see the actual colors, like I said, I already painted one of these. Check out my Instagram or my Facebook. It's all things art. Those, those colors are more true to true to life. Taking my time with the blues because I, I don't want overspray. Uh, if I have to, I will wrap up the gray so I'm not going back and doing that over again. I just wanted to uh, want the gray, uh, the grays to have time to cure a little bit and dry before I even try to. I'm not going to tape them, but I could possibly saran wrap them. That shouldn't really affect the paint from peeling. Gonna let it, for now, I'm just going to focus on the middle and away from the gray. Just make sure I'm not over spraying. And then I'll probably wrap up at least most, most of the area. Like I said, if I get a little over spray along the edges, I don't care. I'll go back and hit that with the paintbrush. What's up, Rodri? Thanks, man. Yeah, these colors look, once it's all done, these colors look awesome. I was really happy with uh, the way the first one came out. It just, it really pops. Uh, the collector I painted it for was really happy with it. It's, uh, it's a big difference. What different colors can do. Not, I shouldn't say different colors, but different shading and highlighting can do. I like to do like an in-between mixture. I don't want to make it like, I mean, I could go in and make this thing pop like crazy, but I don't want it to look too cartoony in the end. 
But uh, yeah, with Sideshow, they tend to stay more like, you know, with, it's not even just this statue, with all their statues, Sideshow, you know, they, they use very muted colors. I guess they, you know, they try to go for more, maybe like a more real life situation versus like, you know, something that you would see in a comic book. You know, with these bright blues and everything, but I don't know. I think you know th there's a there's a balance between the two, and that that's what I'm trying to hit. I'm trying to hit that balance. I don't want it to be so dull the way it was, and I don't want it to be so bright and you know bam in your face like like it does look like a cartoon. Basically, when you're airbrushing, when you when you first getting started, not started with the uh, learning, but uh, you know when you're painting your subject, you want to start very slow, like a, like a light mist. You know, get the color on there, like a like a powder, and then you can go back and lay it on more heavy and more more wet looking. So, I'm starting to go in a little bit more heavier now. Too crazy because I don't want to overspray. Right, let's see, I'm going to be going through this blue very quickly. Uh, Devastator picked up any good comics or storyline worth reading. I only gravitated towards the art. So so for Dan Mora and Jorge Jimenez got my money so far. Sorry, reading my screen from like five feet away here. Uh, let me see. Picked up any good comics? Uh, as far as story wise, you know, I, I try to pick up. I wait until everything comes out on graphic novel. You know, like paperbacks. You know, like the the hardcover. Uh, it's a lot easier. I don't like reading comic issues just because I don't like the weight. If I'm reading something, I want to continue reading it, not just like a quick 10-page comic. So I'm, I'm always behind a year because I'm waiting, you know, for the the hardcover to come out. So I have a bunch of stuff. I mean, you know, I mostly, I'm a, I'm a Batman guy, so I'm mostly reading Batman. Uh, can't say I've read anything recently. Just haven't had the time, but I definitely plan to. I got to, like, you know... Pretty much whatever they're doing with Batman, I pick it up. And then uh, I have been getting in a lot of, you know, like CGC books. I do still collect, you know, comics just for the cover art. So I've actually been doing a lot of that rather than the statues. I've been kind of like taking a break from... You know, statue collecting and just getting back into collecting comics again. You know, for, for the cover. Cover work, cover art. But yeah, yeah, I'm really liking what Jorge Jimenez has, has been doing. I had a chance to meet him at New York. Uh, Comic Con. I was surprised by the the line that that guy had. His line was wrapped around the corner, and I didn't realize he was that popular. But uh, yeah, I was able to pick up an awesome commission by him. The guy's line work is super clean. Some of the getting another brush here. Uh. Yeah, he's a talented guy. Puts a, even just watching him, you know, sign people's books and do little head sketches in people's books, he's, you know, he wasn't rushing them. He, he 
you know, puts all of his time into what he does, and he, you know, you can tell he really cares. He wasn't, you know, just trying to work his way through the crowd. He was really sitting there and putting his all into each, you know, book that he was signing or drawing into, which uh, you know isn't good for the the speed of the line. You're waiting on line for a long time, but uh, it's nice to see that he cares. I think that was his first time in uh, New York, possibly the United States. Camera. Yeah, Billy, those steaks sound good. Uh, I'm actually headed to uh, go see my uncle later. He's in from Florida. Otherwise, I'd probably take you up on that offer. But we'll, we'll definitely try to get together soon. Just, I'm, like I said, well, I'm, I'm focusing on the middle areas. I'm trying to stay away from his arms because I don't want overspray until this dries more. And then I'll wrap it off with something. Definitely going through this blue paint a lot quicker than I was the gray paint. As far as getting like the base color down, it is a slow process because you know I'm, I'm trying to cover over existing paint. You know, someone had asked me on the first one, you know, they, they made a comment like, "Oh, you didn't prime it first. Uh, so he was looking to paint his, I think. I mean, I'm using similar col colors. I didn't really see a need to prime this. I mean, maybe if I was painting him red, <laughs> yeah, I would prime everything first. But because I'm just doing gray over gray and blue over blue, just brightening the colors up. You don't need to prime it. Uh, I'm also using Vallejo paint. Vallejo paint goes on pretty uh, heavy as far as the pigments go. So, uh, let's see. I'm gonna let his chest dry and his back move down to his this is the line cloth here. So, you guys can stare at me for a while, I'll give you a different view. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, the primer. Uh, because I'm using similar colors, don't have to prime it. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the base coat. Yeah, the base coat takes a while because, like I said, I'm trying to cover up another color. I want to make sure I fully get everything. Um, but, uh, you know, when you go in and you're doing your shading, your highlighting, that goes, for the most part, a lot quicker because I, I can sit here and, you know, shade his chest in one or two passes and be done with it. So, 
this is the more uh, involved part of the process, just trying to cover up the previous work that somebody else did. But it needs to be done. I mean, I, I probably could have left the existing colors that were on there and just went in and did better shading and better highlights and just make these colors pop more, but uh, the collector I'm painting this for wanted to... He wanted the colors more vibrant, so that, that includes the base tone. So, everything's got to get brighter before we can go in and do anything else. Alright, I think I'm going to try my idea of trying to stick something to protect his leg here. So make sure this paint is dry. So I, I use alcohol in my paint. It dries the paint fairly quickly. I mean, worst case, I have to go back and fix it, but I'm trying to avoid that. So I think this will work. It's funny, I was watching uh, one of those sideshow videos of their painters. And the lady was just covering the part, similar to what I'm doing right now, but with just her hand. Which I do at times too, sometimes I'll just use my hand to block things off. And it made me laugh because I thought I was like the only one that did something like that, or something as stupid as that. Again, with the, uh, these brighter colors, you know, you got to take your time. Because if you do get over overspray, you're going to notice it really quickly. It's where, if I was doing shading, if I get a little black overspray somewhere, you know, you're not going to notice it. It's just going to look like shading in another spot or more weathering or something. So... bottom areas. Okay. I'm kind of just loosely going around. Which I normally don't do. Usually I like to just focus on one part at a time. Like for example the hand. I would sit here and just paint the hand until it was completely painted. But uh Because we're on camera, I'm trying to keep things moving. I'm working my way around little by little. Otherwise, I would sit here and wait for everything to dry first. So, little by little, eventually this will get covered up. Trying to watch my angles because you know if you shoot the gun off the wrong direction, you will get overspray. I'm trying to keep all my the direction of my spray, I'm trying to keep it forward at the same time, <laughs> making sure it's somewhat on camera. So that's the problem with trying to do this stuff on camera. I can 
If this was all masked off, I would just be shooting it like crazy with the paint. Not worrying about anything. I'm gonna just do a quick flush of my airbrush gun. Nothing crazy. So for that, because I'm still using the same color, I'm just gonna flush it with uh, just water. Just to get out any little contaminants, you know, little pieces of, you know, not dust, but like, you know, little, little particles sometimes, you know, get trapped. As the, the paint dries in the cup, you might get a little, sometimes a little particles, so I just want to blast those out every once in a while. And you also want to keep the needle tip clear so it doesn't clog. So every once in a while, I'll just flush it out real quick. But, uh, yeah, one of the biggest issues with painting is the needle tip can get uh, dry over time, so I'm not sure. Zoom in. An airbrush gun is very similar to like a tattoo gun. You got a you got a little needle at the edge right there. If you see it, I don't know if it's going. You can kind of see it going in and out. So it's 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 a real deal needle, and it definitely hurts if it uh if you touch it. But uh, definitely don't want to get stabbed by that. I've done it cleaning it before. But uh yeah, you get a uh, dry tip, so you see like a lot of. Um, airbrushers, you know, painters constantly cleaning their needle tips. I don't run into that issue uh, because of the thinner that I use, the, the mix that I use. It has, uh, I think it's called, probably saying it wrong, glycol, I think is the name of it. Uh, it's basically a paint retardant. It helps the paint uh, not dry as quickly. It doesn't really affect the model that you're spraying, but I notice it really helps with the dry tip on the airbrush gun. To where you don't get, um, you know, the paint drying on the tip of the gun, which is annoying because then you're sitting there cleaning your airbrush gun every two minutes. So, if you want to avoid that, again, check out my video, everything you need to know about airbrushing. It shows what I use in my thinner. You can just mix up a larger batch of this. I can't really say I get a dry tip. I did when I first started, before I started using my, my thinning mixer. focused. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think my, my head knocked this out of focus.
So, it's so far so good, I'm not seeing any overspray. Again, sorry about the zoom. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little wonky uh, when you're doing it from a, a live stream. <laughs> Longer airbrush compressor hose is nice, but it keeps getting stuck on my foot. The only thing I don't like about having my compressor in the other room is I have no idea what's going on with it right now. I mean, it could be on fire for all I know. Stop going around a little bit. And it's a lot heavier. If I get a little overspray, it's not the end of the world, but I'm trying to avoid it at the moment. It's 
so uh, I can wrap off the gray on his legs. Is the chest even on camera? No, it's not. <laughs> Let's not do the chest right now. Best of both words, worlds, to keep trying to adjust the angle. poster board laying around, but I think I'm out of it. dry but you know I do have tape I have this frog tape which is terrible as tape because it doesn't stick to anything but at the same time it'll be good for this because it's not going to rip my paint so I don't know if anybody ever uses this stuff the yellow brand of frog tape it's a little 
less stronger than the blue version or the green version. But I find it's not that strong at all. Uh, I'll use this when I mask off like large areas and then I'll use my hobby tape. I'll use a uh, Tamaya tape. Use like the little brands of uh, Tamiya, Tamiya tape. If I'm doing like you know, you know like line work, if I want to like mask off between the two colors, I'll use the good stuff, and then I use the cheaper stuff for like the larger areas. But this might come in handy right now because it's not as tacky. So worst case, I'll just have to do the leg over and test this out. Just do a quick pull test. See if it rips the paint off. Alright, I think this will be good. It's not pulling. Alright, so let's see. Like if I get a little bit, I'll go in and do it by hand. the correct way from the start.
doing a quick mask. I mean, I could sit here and spend hours just masking something if it needs to be perfect lines. But uh, I'm just masking for overspray. I'm not masking because I'm trying to paint a straight line anyway. For that, you would have to go in the exact blade and start making cuts on the tape. It's a whole other skill. Paint a little bit quicker, I don't have to worry about the overspray. factory all of this would have been painted first and then assembled so doing a repaint a lot more difficult than what they would have done to this at the factory Good enough for now, just to get that the bottom of this loincloth. So these uh, little side panels here are uh, like a PVC plastic, I guess so they didn't break during shipping. It's a little bit different than painting uh, polystone. 
You can see it as the paint hits the material. It doesn't soak in as much. Let's get rid of all those bad weathering effects. Devastator saying it already looks better than the stock version. It, it's getting there. Like I said, it's going to look crazy at first. <laughs> it's going to look really bright at first until I go back and do the, the ink wash and uh, the shading. I do like this blue, though. This blue is really nice. It's a magic blue. When I painted the... Uh, this guy the first time around I did a bunch of samples of different blues and wasn't really happy with any of them until I found this one I thought this was going to be too bright and it is too bright uh, that's why when I do the ink wash I'm not clear coating it first uh, the ink wash darkens it up just perfectly otherwise I would clear coat it first and then do the ink wash So. But yeah, this is a really nice color blue. Like maybe like like a Superman. This would look great on Superman. Careful with these plastic panels because I can see they're not, like I said, soaking up the paint. Just getting a little bit of a drip marks here and there. Bottom of the loin cloth is good. The hand is the trickiest because it's just hard to get in there. Saving that to the end. 
just hit it one more time real quick. It's also got a little, a lot of crevices, so I gotta paint it slower, otherwise the paint's gonna start dripping. It's a lot of folds and wrinkles, which is fun to, to shade and highlight, but when you're trying to get full coverage, it uh, takes a while. Get the edge later when I mask mask that part off. Oh. So it's definitely the most toughest part getting into is this area. I'm excited to shade this guy. This guy was a lot of fun to shade and highlight. He's got all these cool muscles and uh, crevices. Yeah. It's a really cool sculpt, Martin Canale.
That's the fun part. This is all the, the tedious, boring stuff right now. But like I said, it's got to be done before you can get to the fun stuff. Almost there though, I'm getting there. Try not to press my luck here by getting too close to the arms without them being masked off first. Well, like I said, worst case, it's it's gray. You know, gray is almost like a primer. It quickly goes over other colors, so I can quickly blue gets on there. It's not that end of the world. I can quickly cover it back up. They must have painted a lot of this by hand. Because I'm seeing a lot of little stuck uh, paintbrush bristles everywhere. Um, looks like they did a lot of dry brushing. So that's probably what the issue was. I mean, it happens. You know, brushes, brushes do shed bristles. Imagine they're, you know, using cheap brushes. Not that some cheap brushes aren't that good, but they probably go through the brushes like crazy over at the factories painting a thousand of these things. So I would imagine they're probably using some really crappy stuff to where the bristles are constantly falling out. If anyone's watching this live, I'm curious, if you do own this statue or just in general, what do you think about the orange hand? Do you like the orange hand? Would you keep it or would you paint over it? If, if Sideshow made this 
with the option, you know, or just never painted it orange. Would you have preferred it not to be orange? I mean, it's a cool effect, but it's just really... <laughs> even, like, what you see on this, on camera, is what you see in person. It's that orange. Which, I don't know. Dark Side has a lot of powers, but... Making his hand glow, I don't know. batch of paint. So let's zoom out for a minute. I think I ordered a few bottles of these. But uh, the magic blue first time around, so I'm going through this stuff like crazy. Gonna mix it a little thicker this time around, just to get a little bit more heavier coverage on it. A speck right here or something. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna have to fix that. You know, it's not even like a speck of paint. They left like some type of part, like a little particle behind. Like I said, I was finding like little paint bristles. It's like a little speck of dust. And uh, from far away, it just it looks like a, a a black speck of paint splattered on him when it's not it's just it's, it's creating like a shadow I'm actually gonna cut that off real quick cuz that's really annoying and it just looks like I accidentally spilled paint on him or something so I'm just gonna go with an exacto and cut that out and repaint that section now before I get any further oh actually it's a hole huh that's interesting that's why it's creating a shadow. <laughs> There's a hole there. All right. That changes things. I gotta fill that in then. All right. I mean, it's the tiniest little mark. Here. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see it. Let's go remote again. Man, yeah, check this out. See that right there? there there's a hole right there there you go that's a hole so like far away if you look at it like I'm looking at it right now I'm like I'm thinking it's like a little you know piece of dust or you know whatever it's a freaking hole in the statue all right so I'm going to fill that in real quick it's not the end of the world Glad I caught it now before I got any further. Since we're just doing the uh, the base coat, I'll throw a little putty in there real quick. So, <laughs> going into a new thing that I wasn't planning on doing today. Uh, epoxy sculpt. This is what I use for all my repairs. It's a two-part epoxy. I'm sorry it's coming in blurry right now. Let's see if I can focus it. Oh, come on. It doesn't want to focus. There we go. Epoxy sculpt. <laughs> Sounds like a commercial. Uh, epoxy sculpt. Two-part epoxy. You mix two equal halves together. It's like a forms of clay. Sculpting clay. I use it for my repairs. If I'm re-sculpting something or filling in gaps. Or in this case, filling in a hole. 
So I don't know if you can see it from back here. Just got two little pieces, two little balls, equal halves, mix them together. And then you can sculpt with it, you know, form wherever it is that you want to form out of it. And it dries in about four to six hours to uh, a hard epoxy. And it's self-hardening. You don't have to heat it. It's permanent, self-hardening. You, you know, you can sand the stuff. You can obviously paint over it. It's expensive though so it's not like something you would want to like freehand sculpt an entire statue out of because that would be super expensive uh stuff's like i think like 30 dollars a container or something like that and with those two jaws you probably have enough to do a boot of this guy so it's not something that you would use for like sculpting an entire statue if you were doing one by hand but it works really good for like adding to a statue like if you wanted to you know, add additional, you know, whatever parts or pieces to a statue or fixing them, you know, filling in gaps and so on. I think on the commercial for it, there's a, a lady, she has a horse, you know, a little horse figurine, and she wants to add her uh, hair onto the horse, onto the horse's leg, and you see her, you know, sculpting the hair onto the horse, so it's stuff like that, it's small stuff, nothing crazy. Right, so I'm just going to take a little tiny piece of it, and jam it in there. Airbrush gun. I mean, you're supposed to let it dry, but, uh, I mean, it's the smallest little speck, so not too worried about it. It'll eventually dry in a few hours, but I will be painting over it immediately. If it was something larger, obviously, wait until it dries before you, uh, paint it. Are we still focused? There we go. And it's gone. Yeah, De De Devastator was saying about the uh, the mother hen, not the mother hen. <laughs> the uh, should have been a mother hen. The uh, the orange effect on the, the hand would have been cool. But I was trying to say is uh, been cool if it came with a mother box in the hand, because then it would have made sense that the hand was glowing because he's holding a mother box. Um, and that's exactly what I'm giving him. But we're still going to get rid of the the orange glow because. Uh, the LED effect creates a glowing effect, and the LEDs that I'm using are replaceable. Um, and I include like four of them 
each one's rated, you know, usually rated for like 50,000 hours of shelf time life for the bulbs. So, I mean, it'll last a lifetime. Um, I designed the mother boxes for this guy. It's where you could actually swap out the light. Um, it works on a remote control. I mean, I put every thought process into it as possible. Like, I engineered that thing for most, maybe like two months, making sure it was perfect. Because I, I wanted it to be perfect to where somebody can actually use the light-up effect. So a lot of these things, you know, we get these light-up effects on these statues, and then we're afraid to use them because we don't want them to burn out. So I was like, I, I don't want that to happen. I want to create the mother box to where... If it does burn out, you can replace it, and that's how I created it. It has a, a secret panel that opens up on the box. You can pop the light out. It, the light uh, just takes batteries. You know, you pop the light back in. You want to add a, you know, a new one if something happens to it, and you're good to go again. So, you can you can you can run the light during the day. You know, at night you can run the light just forever. And I mean, you don't have to worry about it burning out on this. Uh, on this guy that I made it for. So, that was one of the decisions with getting rid of the orange glow. Because even, I mean, like I said, there's no reason to shut it off. You can just leave the thing running constantly. Other than having to replace the batteries, I guess. But, it takes like one of those watch batteries. They last pretty long. But, either way, it's good that it doesn't burn out. I gotta stand up, actually. Uh, Travis in the chat says, I pre-ordered a PCS Wolverine one-third scale Sideshow Toys. Uh, that's actually my favorite Wolverine statue right now that uh, PCS did. That one's really good. So congrats on that. That's an awesome purchase. I really like the way they did that one. His top is almost done. I gotta, you know, I haven't really been focusing on the neck area because uh, I gotta stand up for that. But uh, once I finish that neck area, the body is pretty much done. And I should have time. I think I, yeah, I should have time to uh, shade him today. I think we'll see. I plan to paint until about maybe like another hour. Getting a little stiff. I've been sitting here for a while already. Where are we going? I'm going almost three hours already. <laughs> Man, I'm still just doing the base coat. So I do want to take a little break. Um, so maybe maybe I'll, I'll save the shading for tomorrow. We'll see. This way I can do all the shading and hopefully one day you know, it'll be nice and nice, fun video. So that, that's always fun. It's, it's quick. You go around fun to watch to me that's the most interesting stuff to watch is shading and highlighting this is the boring part so if you are watching this uh, much props to you for <laughs> sticking around watching this but if you want to learn this is uh, what needs to be done you should have the full experience of knowing how long it sits here <laughs> how long it takes to sit here and do all this it's also good if somebody ever questions you to paint something and says, well, you know, I don't want to pay this much money for a paint job. And you could say, well, you know, it takes like 30 hours or, you know, 20 hours or, you know, it takes me 5, 10 hours to paint something. You know, this isn't a, this isn't China where they pay them, you know, cheaper rates to paint something. See up my time. I'm sitting here on a Saturday. And I'll be sitting here again tomorrow on a Sunday painting this guy. And it takes time. But I do enjoy this much more than the repairs. Uh, I've said it in a few posts already. Take these headphones off because I'm listening to music at the same time. Um, yeah, I've said it 
in a few posts already, and I think in a few videos. Uh, moving forward into 2024, uh, I'm not taking as many repairs, just because um, one, it takes up a lot of time, more time than what I'm doing right here. Um, also, it makes a mess out of my booth when I have to sit here and sand, you know, parts smooth or sit here and match textures and sculpt, um, which slows down other projects because then I have to constantly clean my booth every so often, you know, each, each time, each day I'm working on something. So, uh, yeah, the point where I was going with that is in moving forward into 2024, I'm not taking a lot of repairs. I'll take them every once in a while, but my focus for 2024 is going to be strictly painting. Uh, so if you have kits, you know, model, you know, kits that need to be painted or, you know, models, whatever you want to call them, I am taking commissions for 2024. I'm currently booked until about... I don't know, maybe like March, you know, like the first quarter. Um, after this guy, I'm working on, what was her name? It was one of those Savage Land pieces. It's a quarter scale uh, female statue. Savannah, I don't know, I her name. But uh, the commissioner did a series of them. He did uh, Savage Land Rogue. He did Savage Land Storm. Uh, I might be working on those two as well, hopefully. So, 2024, I want to focus on painting again, not doing repairs. As much as I like doing the repairs and, uh, you know, helping out the community, because I hate seeing things broken, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm matching somebody else's work, I'm not doing my own style, you know, I'm trying to recreate their colors, I'm trying to rec recreate their paint technique, so... It's a fun challenge, but, you know, I want to do my own thing. I want to do my own shading. I don't want to sit there and try to match what somebody else did. I want to do my own style, okay? So. 2024, I'm going to be focusing more on just painting and not the repair work. Got to finish up the his neck and shoulders here, and then move down to the boots. Hopefully, I think I could probably get the boots done. Like I said, I need to stop in about an hour. Head up. Try to get some fresh air on Saturday. I can hear my compressor in the next room. It's definitely a lot quieter. Uh, so if you do get into airbrushing, keep in mind, like I said earlier in the video, uh, you know, you have a, a compressor that runs, you know, to push the airflow out the paintbrush, and it does get noisy. So if you're going to get into airbrushing, try to get a larger compressor if you have room for it. This way it's not constantly kicking on and off annoying the rest of your family. Uh, it, does, it does vibrate, shake a little bit, and you know, it sounds like a motor running until it uh, finishes filling up the tank with air again. So, you know, so there's a lot of times I want to paint that night, you know, in the evening, and I can't because I don't want to wake up the rest of my house. Now that I have a longer air hose, maybe I can put it somewhere else. In another room or in a closet.
If anybody is uh, watching this live, do you have any statues coming in by the end of the year? I'm curious what you guys have coming in. Let's, uh, you know, we don't have to talk painting, we can talk regular statues. Or if you have any painting questions, feel free to ask. Or if you're watching this on replay and you have any painting questions, feel free to leave a, a comment. I always answer all the comments. Blue paint very quickly. I mix up a new batch. But yeah, it's looking good. Just gotta get a few areas around the glove and around his uh, his arms there that I need the mask off first. And then obviously I still need to do the boots. But big difference between the boot color and his color. This will end up like almost being like the highlight color. So once he gets ink washed, he gets darker. And then I take this color, the magic blue, with a little bit of white, like not even that much, just a, a slight, the hideous bit amount of white paint to brighten it up, just a drop. And I go in and I do all the highlights with this same color. So this, en this actually ends up being the highlight color of the piece. There, so he's got a custom Chun Li coming in. Nice. What what scale Chun Li? Third scale. Also, you want to collect the third scale? Um, no, that was Travis. Well, I'm guessing if it's custom, it's probably quarter scale, right? Yeah, I got some customs coming in too. I mean, obviously I do 3D printing, but I still order. Well, not often, but I do order customs every once in a while. No, that's a lot. I shouldn't say once in a while. Um, actually, I have my first. No, no, I, I had a, used to have a Star Wars custom, but I sold that one. Um, anyway, though, I have a Superman custom coming in. That is supposed to be shipping, but we're waiting for everybody to finish their payments, which is annoying. Alright, let's finish the neck. That hole disappeared. Looks nice now. You know, they probably didn't catch it because when his when his colors were darker, it just blended in. You didn't see it, but now that he's he's like a bright blue, it just stood out. It must have like a little air bubble in the uh, the cast. Once again. It happens, it was the smallest little speck, but this is a giant ice door. They said one fourth scale Chun Li. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> yeah, don't mention the studios. But uh, 
if you follow the studios, you know there's a group having trouble collecting payments on a Superman. And that's the Superman I'm waiting for. They're also doing a... It's, a, it's an Alex Ross piece. They're doing an Alex Ross Superman and an Alex Ross Batman. I have those two pre-ordered. Shoulders are done. Wow, is that another hole? There's like two more little pinholes right there. Not too far from where the the other hole was. You probably won't see them once I shade do the shading, so I'm gonna leave it for now. But if I do notice it becomes an issue. After I do the shading and the ink wash, I'll go back in and fill it in. It, it's, it's off to the side. It's not as noticeable. It's like right where his armpit is. Little by little, I'm getting closer and closer to the arm. I gotta mask it off. Well, actually, this part's protected by the uh, the metal. <clears throat> really, just around his bicep. I gotta be careful. <clears throat> Excuse me. The the metal's gonna get painted. Yeah, actually, this is supposed to be metal, too, I think, right here. Huh. I don't know if I painted that metal the last time. I don't even think they painted it metal. I think it's supposed to be metal right here in his armpit. When they painted the metal, like, especially on his hand... We got the glow in hand here. So if you look at the metal, they just, they paint it over it blue. They even leave it metal. So I have a feeling they did the same thing on his armpit. Right there. Right where his bicep touches his body. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be metal. I'm going by the sculpt. So, again. Another, I don't, know, I don't know what they were going with when they painted this. It's almost like they did kind of the same thing with the boots. Like, I don't know if it's supposed to be like his. I don't know. It's coming from a different angle. It's almost like the the weathering color is blue. on a, a goose neck. Alright. Time for the boots. But yeah, what I was saying, um so if you look at the boots, which you can't see. Like towards the bottom. Like, this is all supposed to be, like, gunmetal, but then they took, like, blue shading. I don't know. They just threw blue everywhere. Can't even explain it, because I'm not really sure what they were trying to do.
down here I could be a little bit more liberal with the paint because I don't have to worry about the overspray. Because it's, uh, I already got the base protected. So the boots will go a lot quicker as far as getting them sprayed. I do want to leave the bottom, though. I don't, I mean, if I get a little overspray, that's fine because I'm going to go back in with hand by hand and uh, redo the gunmetal. Just because, like I said, they have like this blue overspray on it. I want to get rid of that because it doesn't make sense to me. And I will give it a like muddy, you know, overspray, like a muddy weathering effect. Not a blue the weathering effect. So it looks a lot better with some, you know, brownish weathering effects on it. But the bottom in general is fine. I don't need to like cover that. Like this piece is a perfect example. This piece is part of his boot, like the bottom part of his boot. And it should be metal, but they had it painted blue. Oh, the whole thing doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Nice if I can run the music in the background without getting copyrighted. I'll have to look into that. There are some, you know, copyright free songs on YouTube. But yeah, I'm just jamming out to whatever's playing on my headphones right now. Boots are going a lot quicker than the body. I think what I did the first time around, I know, I mean, obviously I removed them from the base. 
trying to think if I created like a custom stand for him. Oh yeah, I did. Oh, okay, I remember what I did. So, um, I'm trying to wonder, like, how the hell did I get behind him? I have this. Uh... Oh god, I still even have the template for it. So I got this. Uh... What do you call this stuff? Uh, it's like a hard foam board. It's pretty thick. It stands up. And uh, I made a custom template for his foot. So that was his right foot with the peg. And that was uh, the outline from his left foot. Just from being... Uh, looks like the, a mist of clear coat that created an outline. But uh, yeah, I just pegged him into the pegboard. And I had him standing on this. So I can get all around. Um... Tactically, I can put him on this right now <laughs> and get rid of the base and not have to wrap the base up, but this, because it's foam, he is a little bit wobbly. Uh, I don't want to take the chance of him tipping over, so it was something I did towards the end and just painted it really quickly. I held onto his body as I was, you know, painting around his foot. Uh, so that'll get done at the end when I need to get behind his foot. Or once he dries, I'll take him off the base and get behind his foot. But I'm glad I saved that, so at least I still have the template. Not that it was hard to make, I just basically pushed his foot into it, because it's foam. But that's how I got behind the foot. Otherwise, you can make, like, a some type of jig, like, you know, out of wood. It takes a little bit more time, but it'll definitely be more sturdier. But I'll, I'll probably clamp him down, wait until, like, I'll, I'll clear coat him, get everything, you know, nice and cured, and then I'll probably just clamp his foot down this time. Because I remember that he was a little bit wobbly painting him the last time. So, for now, I'm not doing behind his foot. That will get done later. But, yeah, but this, like I said, this guy, he's so big. Um, <laughs> it's tricky to paint. I mean, you can't just pull his boot off or something. Alright, the boots actually didn't take that long. I mean, I still gotta go a little bit closer to the body, obviously, but I got really good coverage quickly on the boots, for whatever reason. Maybe I was a little bit more heavy-handed, or because I know I don't have to really worry about the overspray as much. So I'm kind of Going a little bit more gung ho on it. Or, uh, I might be a little delusional from the paint fumes and time's going by quicker for me. I don't know. This is acrylic paint, by the way. I was just joking about it. Well, I do have uh, the thinner. It does contain isopropyl alcohol, so I do have fumes from the alcohol. But in general, this is a acrylic. It's a, a water-based paint, which is why I like using acrylic paint versus, like, enamel paint. Uh, otherwise, you're sitting here. You see, it's, I'm going on, it was, like, three hours, and to sit here with a mask, you know, a respirator on for three hours, it's very uncomfortable. have a, an exhaust fan running off to the side, sucking the air outside, which I need to upgrade because it's not the greatest when I built this little booth here. And I think that's about as much as I can do until I mask off. Oh, I got slid over here. Uh, until I can mask off the rest of the leg here. Which means once I finish this, what time is it? It's two. I still do about another hour. Um, yeah, I'll probably start ink washing him today, I guess. Get that going.
Uh, Reading De Devastator says, uh, scrolling through Art Station and mind blowing how many talented artists there are out there. Yeah, Art Station is fantastic. I remember when I first discovered Art Station, the same thing. I was blown away by just how many talented people are on that website. crazy and uh, the field of art you know not many get you know well known to where you know somebody's name so when somebody does break through it's very you know rare meanwhile there are probably more talented artists out there that you know nobody even knows who they are that might even be better than the well known you know the people that are well known they just never get the recognition or the chance to be known Think of a few people, but I won't mention names. Because, I mean, art is subjective. I mean, something might not look good to somebody, but to somebody else, you know, might be cool looking to them. dry for a second I'll let this boot vent out a little bit there's a lot of mist in here and uh, I'm gonna tape up the bottom of his leg up here so I can get the the top of his boot with the blue so usually when I want the paint to dry quicker uh, sometimes I go around with a hairdryer Sometimes I just go around with the, the airbrush gun, just spraying just air. Uh, even though we're live this time around, I'm just gonna let it dry, so I apologize, because I need a quick minute break. I've been painting nonstop, pretty much. Uh, man. Going for a cup of coffee right now. Let's see. The only thing with the hair dryer is I have plastic down here. I don't want this to get too hot and melt and stick to his leg. So I'm not using the hair dryer down here, that's for sure. Um, could use the airbrush gun. I mean, it's almost dry. Hopefully this is dry on his skin. I bet that doesn't peel up later. It should be. This tape is so weak. All right. Let's keep... Let's keep rocking and rolling. Let's see which foot that I did first. Let's start with that one. This one appears to be drier. Let's start with this one. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to come back and touch it up with the brush, the uh, paintbrush. basically trying to save myself from having to touch up the entire leg again. dry in case I accidentally brush into it so it's not fully dry yet but I'm just being really careful not to touch it if I do again it's not the end of the world it's just something I have to fix this is all the rough stages of the project so if something goes wrong it's not the end of the world Towards the end, if you accidentally mess up, you know, when you're almost done and you're finally detailing everything and you mess up, that's when you get bad.
certain areas I can go in with the, the silly putty. If I have to. So far I'm having pretty good success with this tape. perfect but I'll hit it with the uh paper. Alright. That leg is screwed. Function we gotta get in here. against anything yet because I didn't clear code in it. Trying to tuck the tape behind the knee pad here. Maybe get the silly putty. Real quick, so it dries a That dries as I'm taping the other area. Alright, so when masking, we use tape or we can use silly putty. It's probably the two most common 
methods. It's basic old silly putty. This might not work either. I don't think it's a tough angle. I'm probably gonna have to tip them to get over there. Trying to get that little nook right there. Heads in the way, sorry. options what's what's quicker to sit here and mask it off or for me just to go back and later touch it back up with the paintbrush might have been quicker with the paintbrush but I'm almost done now That's good enough for now. If I gotta touch it up with the paintbrush, whether it's the gray or the blue, that's all gonna get done at the end. Anyway, at the end of this entire project, I go back and just clean up every single line everywhere, every boot line, every line around the belt, you know, everywhere. So 
I'm gonna have to do it either way with the paintbrush later. Still put a little piece of tape right over that. I think I can still slide a piece of tape behind the kneecap. I should say the knee guard. You know, as I have the tape so loose, because I don't want the stick on the skin, because I haven't clear coated him yet, so it's kind of hard to sneak another piece down here. So it's catching the rest of the other pieces of tape as I go. That's good. Alright. Let me do a little painting so the paint doesn't dry up in my airbrush gun and then I'll do the other boot. It's almost impossible to get behind that knee uh, knee guard entirely, so I'm just going to miss it a little bit. I mean, even they didn't really paint behind that thing, so I'm not too worried about like behind. Uh, am I on camera? Yeah, I'm not too worried about like directly behind that area. Um, if it's darker, it's fine anyway. So the existing color of it being darker is fine because it just looks like a shadow. Plus later on, when I come back, like I said, this is all the base color. So later on, I'm going to come back and make, you know, the edges darker or the, the very, very edges, you know, I should say brighter, do a little bit of like weathering certain spots. So 
I mean, I'm probably being a little OCD with the base coat right now because half of this you're probably not even going to see again later, or it'll just get covered up either way with something else, with a different, you know, paint technique. But I don't know, I like to be thorough. good time to flush out the airbrush gun it's been a while and I've been taking breaks with uh, the taping so you know the paint sits in the cup it sits on the needle I flush it out I'm gonna actually flush it out with the thinner this time just a little bit just to run it through the needle keep the needle moving freely All right, so I should be able to finish the booth, uh, the booths, <laughs> the boots today. Um, as far as shading goes, because it's getting a little bit late, um, I'm going to do all the shading most likely tomorrow, as well as the ink washing. So I could say, let me think. I'm trying to think if I should clear coat him now. This way I could do the ink, oh, I don't think, the, uh, the skin at the same time. Well, actually, no, I can't clear coat them because I gotta ink the blue first. Uh, still alive. My phone just glitched out for a second. That was weird. Alright, um. Hmm. It is what it is. All right, so tomorrow I'm going to have to do the ink on the body, and let's see. Uh, and I'll have to wait a day, I guess, because I have to clear coat him. Cause the, clear coat, the clear coat needs to dry for, like, at least three to four hours, and I usually like to at least wait a day. But if I have time, I'll just wait three or four hours, and then I'll start... Um, you know, rolling the video again on them if, it, if the time works out to when I want to paint. So, tomorrow will definitely be, <clears throat> excuse me, tomorrow will definitely be, I'm sorry, <clears throat> so stuck my throat. Tomorrow will definitely be um, shading the body and inking the body. That'll be a lot of fun. And. Oh, maybe I can start the por I'll start the portraits. I'll start the hand. I can paint the hand. All right, so that's what we'll do. Tomorrow we'll do the body. We'll do the portraits. We'll do the, the other hand, the glowing hand. It's always fun painting over that glowing hand and getting rid of that glow. <laughs> and uh, I'll wait a day, skip a day, you know, and then come back and do the, the ink on just the skin areas. That's why everything gets clear-coated first. All right, so let me finish up these boots and... That will wrap up the video for today. So, that, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow doing another live stream. As long as it all goes well according to plan. Uh, as of right now, I plan to live stream tomorrow. Uh, everything I just said as far as doing the shading. So, that should be a really good video to watch. As well as the ink washing. And, uh... I'll set up a link. As soon as I end this live stream, I'll set up a link for tomorrow's video. If you want to get notified uh, for it otherwise uh i'll be jumping on same time it'll be about 10 30 10 30 a.m my time um i'm eastern eastern standard time so roughly around 10 30 we'll jump on and start getting into the shading and all the cool stuff so let me finish taping up his leg i can use a break anyway so this will be a good time and we got the majority of the base coat done, so that's good. That was that was like the longest part of painting this guy. It's covering up the existing stuff. Okay. That tape went excellent. 
Sometimes the tape just goes on perfectly the first time. Other times you gotta sit there and fuss around with it. If you want to see this guy already painted up, check out my Instagram, check out my Facebook, check out the other video on him. It's all things art on Instagram, it's all things art on Facebook. I tend to post more photos on Facebook because, uh, you know, it allows you. Instagram only lets you put 10 photos at a time, where Facebook I can upload as many as I want. Also, Facebook. Um, allows you to put full-size photos to where Instagram it has to be like a certain aspect ratio so it's quite annoying but uh so yeah if you're not on my Facebook check out it's all things art on Facebook because that's where I put a lot of my the most of my photos but otherwise Instagram I do put a lot of photos there too just not everything like I might I might include more pictures on the Facebook of a, like a statue, just because it allows me to. <laughs> right. And what was I going to say? Yeah, on YouTube, I already painted this guy. It's like a 20 minute video. You can see all the before and after. Again, it's coming down to. Do I want to just sit there and try to get the tape perfect, or just go back with the paintbrush and fix it? In two seconds. Then we'll get fixed with the paintbrush. And again, I'm using this tape because it's not as sticky. We just painted the gray today. Um, I don't want to use tape that's like extremely sticky in fear of pulling off the gray paint. Otherwise, I would get out my, uh, my better tape, which would allow me to get in these little tight areas a lot easier. So, if you're wondering why I'm sitting here struggling with this tape, that's why I want to uh, mess up the gray paint that was sprayed earlier. Uh, in a perfect world, I would have waited a day and came back and did this tomorrow. Let's see if we can get on. This was the tricky part on the other leg. Because it's at a different angle. It's bad, though. Uh, I'm 
would be easier if I just took a piece of paper on my finger and sprayed it. You know, I might be able to do that with my finger or something. Let me see. Actually, I was doing before with the paper. I just take a piece of paper and block it off. Yeah, I'll figure. I'll do it with the paper when I get there. Cause uh, you can slide the paper. It's not sticky. I'll just have to touch it up with the paper. you learn the hard way. That was a lot easier. Alright. that dry for a second before I can move that piece of paper. I don't want to disturb it. Speed it up with the just the air. Away from it, come back to it. We are completely out of paint in the cup. I got to mix up a quick new batch. Which sucks because I was just about at the end right there. <laughs> So I'm gonna go around off camera and I'll start. I'm gonna start touching up uh, the areas around the arms and around the glove. Still got it. Uh, actually, it's getting late, but I will eventually do it. Maybe tonight.
Don't need any more. Again, I'm, pro I'm probably going overkill with the base coat. <laughs> I mean, it's blue over blue paint. And like I say, you're probably not going to see half of this again once I weather it and shade it. But... Uh, so Devastator in the chat, uh, thoughts on AI art and sculpts, uh, question, played with stable diffusion, to see what the buzz was about, and it's pretty scary, as I say, if, if know how to prompt, yeah, the prompt commands, right, the, was it like the code just generates whatever you want it to do, I, I, pers I haven't messed around with AI type stuff other than like that app, I think it was, was it, uh, I think the name was like Lenza or something like that when it first came out with all the, the AI buzz. And I mean, it's pretty cool what it does, but yeah, at the same time, it is really scary. I mean, AI, AI is in everything, not just art, so it does come in handy, but I mean, just in general. <laughs> If you think of like the Terminator movies, it feels like we're not too far off from the Terminator movies. The way things are going. Because now they're, as the AI gets smarter, you know, we, we've been building robots forever. But with the AI getting smarter and smarter, you know, they keep putting the newer AI technology into the robots and it's almost like they're human-like at this point. Alright, um... As far as artwork, yeah, I don't know. There's ways to prevent it. I mean, half of the stuff I see, like when I'm browsing through Facebook, and it's, it's like I don't know if it was AI generated or somebody actually worked on it. Other than you know, if somebody puts their signature on it. The only thing I know with the AI, it's not too good at doing you know like fingers and hands. So if I do see a picture and I see the fingers or the hands are messed up, then I'm like, okay, I definitely know that's AI generated. Um, but yeah, I was highly into digital art. Um, you know, years ago, I was, I was a graphic designer. Still do it once in a while. But yeah, I feel bad for the guys that uh, you know make a living, graphic design and digital art like that. So it's, uh, pretty much does what they do a lot quicker, <laughs> in, the, in the blink of an eye. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, I'm gonna let this dry. I'll stop peeling off the tape, and then I'll just give you an overview of what was done today. All the way back. So, right about there's about covers what was done. Yeah, I'm gonna let the blue dry. I'll peel off the tape. I'm gonna go around with a paintbrush. Maybe. I don't know. I gotta think it through what steps I want to take. And. That now. Um, I definitely got fixed around the edges of the gloves and around the shoulder pads because I didn't even paint that yet. Like right here. So I didn't have a chance to mask it off yet. Um, and then, yeah, I think it should be ready to go for tomorrow as far as like the. Um, doing the shadows and the highlights and the ink wash on the blue as long as, long as I can get if I have time today to finish off these few areas which I, I should have time it's getting a little bit late but uh yeah I'll see you guys 
If you join me again live tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. I'll put up the YouTube link in a little bit to set that up. Uh, it's 10.30 a.m. my time, uh, Eastern Standard Time. And, um, yeah, I'm going to try to bang out the rest of this real quick as far as, like, fixing some of the areas I missed and get this all set up for tomorrow. So if you're watching this live, thanks for watching. If you're watching, uh, if you're watching it on replay, uh, if you have any questions or if you want to see him fully painted, he is already, I did one already previously that's already painted up. We're doing the same, pretty much the same exact thing on this guy. I'm definitely going to do a little bit more weathering probably on this one. So he'll be slightly different, but for the most part, pretty much the same as the first one I did. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me today on my first live stream on this channel. And take care. Have a, for some reason, if I'm not back tomorrow, have a, a happy holiday. All right, take care. Bye.